Hello everyone! Welcome to the first of a series of five videos designed to supplement the labs for ENGR 467 Real-Time and Embedded System Design. This course is offered by the University of British Columbia at the Okanagan campus and gives you a basic understanding of real-time operating systems. These videos are intended to give a basic overview of some topics and instruction on how to complete certain tasks. Due to the nature of this course, these videos will not provide a complete procedure to finish the labs and you must instead follow the instructions laid out in the lab manuals. I expect this video to be the longest of the five as we will be creating the groundwork for the remaining labs. To make it easier to find specific instructions, I will partition the video into different sections and provide timestamps in the video description. My name is Logan, your lab instructor, and I will be working with you throughout the semester. Let's get started with some basic information regarding the course. To start off, if you are looking for contact information for myself or Dr. Elnagar, please see the course syllabus found on Canvas. Before starting this lab, please ensure you have access to a computer, ideally one with Windows, though Apple products should work as well, and a Tebow launchpad development board. Make sure to purchase a C-Series TM4C123G launchpad, as this is the microcontroller that the course was designed for. I'm now going to give you a very basic overview of the Tebow launchpad for those who may have not used one in the past. The Launchpad is an evaluation platform designed by Texas Instruments to showcase the features of their ARM Cortex-based microcontrollers. These microcontrollers have many features, such as two CAN bus peripherals and a 12-bit ADC. More importantly for this course, however, it boasts a fast 80 MHz 32-bit CPU and plenty of memory. This enables us to install a BIOS and meet all tasks before their respective deadlines. On this board, you may notice that there are two different USB ports. These correspond to the debug and run modes of operation. For our labs, always ensure you connect the USB cable to the TOG connector and that the toggle switch is set to debug. It's a simple mistake to make, but it can be quite frustrating if overlooked. When handling the board, always try to hold it by the edges of the PCB, as this will make sure you don't accidentally damage any components through electrostatic discharge. This is unlikely to happen to this specific board, but it is always a good idea to be aware of the dangers. We are now going to work through the pre-lab component of the lab manual. This section involves downloading and installing Code Composer Studio, TivaWare, and the Texas Instruments lab materials. I will be running through the installation on my machine for your reference, but the steps can be found in the lab manual as well. If you are using an Apple computer, the outline steps should give you enough guidance to install the application yourself, however you may encounter some issues. I will mention these later on. Let's begin. Our first task is to download and install Code Composer Studio. You can find a link to Code Composer in the LAN manual under Part 1 Software Installation. Clicking on the link will take you to a web page where you can click Get Software and then select the installer that you need for your operating system. In my case, I'm on Windows, so I will be using the Windows Single File Installer for CCS IDE. I've already downloaded the file, and I've unzipped it using an archive tool. You'll have to do the same. Open up the folder, and click CCS Setup to begin the installation. Wait a couple seconds for the installer to start up, and we'll continue from there. The installation procedure is rather straightforward, but we want to make sure we do not miss anything. Read through the agreement and make sure to accept it. And if you are asked on this page about a pending reboot, just hit OK. We will be installing to the C drive in a directory called TI. OK. Choose Custom Installation as we will be selecting only the libraries that we need. Choose TM4C12X and hit Next. We will not be worrying about any debug tools or debug probes, and so we can move past those screens quite quickly. Hit Next to begin the installation. I will speed up this next section to make things faster for you, but do expect it to take somewhere around five minutes. Now that the installation is complete, we can move on to the second part of the pre-lab, where we will be installing TivaWare. Go to the lab manual and click on the second link. Doing so will take you to another web page 
where we can download the software. Click on SWEKTM4C123GXL2.1.4.178. You will be required to create a new account or log in with an existing MyTI. I'll do the same here with my account. Make sure your information is correct, select Civil, and understand and accept the conditions on using this software. Once you hit Submit, the file will be downloaded and you can find it in your downloads again. Run the application and it will start another installer. Select Next, read through the manifest and the license agreement, Accept the license agreement and hit next. The TVWare is going to install in CTI again, and we can hit install. And with that, the installation is done. Now, as I mentioned before, Macintosh users may have problems doing this installation. You may have noticed that the software we're installing is actually a Windows executable file. Because of this, an Apple computer won't be able to run it. One option is to rename the file to a .zip and extract it, but this isn't always successful. The second option is to use a program called Wine. Wine is a program that allows you to run Windows applications on a Macintosh computer. Doing this with the installer will allow you to successfully extract the files that are needed. I don't believe this is the only solution to the problem, but I know it has worked in the past. Now, we're going to be downloading the TI RTOS workshop manuals. You can do this by following the link in the lab manual. Doing so will immediately download the files, and you can find them in your downloads. You need to extract the files to the same directory that you installed CCS. This is in your C drive under TI, and I've named the file TI RTOS. Now that everything's installed, you can look at your C drive in TI, and you need to make sure that you have these three items. If everything's installed correctly, it should look the same. That's the end of the pre-lab. You've now successfully installed CCS. I'm now going to give you a very brief introduction to Code Composer Studio. CCS is what's known as an Integrated Development Environment, or IDE, which provides all the tools needed to code, build, and flash a program to an embedded system. CCS is quite powerful and you'll find it is often used in industry when working with Texas Instrument products. The main benefit of using CCS over another program, such as Energia, is the built-in ability to handle adding and managing a BIOS on the launchpad. I would suggest taking some time to become familiar with navigating around the program as it has some quirks. You may have noticed that this particular version of CCS looks different from the one shown in the lab manual, but it should function the same. The last thing I'm going to show you today is how to create a new project in CCS and connect to the TIBA launchpad. There are a number of different things we must set up correctly to ensure it works properly. Open Code Composer Studio. The first thing you'll notice when starting the program is it asks you to select a workspace. We do not want to use the default workspace and instead we'll use one in the TI folder. Select Browse and navigate to CTI TI RTOS workspace and select this directory. Check the box to use this location as a default and tell the program not to ask you again. Once the program has started, let's begin by creating a new CCS project. Go to Project new CCS project, and we have to enter information to this dialog box. Type TM4C123GH6PM and select that option. That's the board we're going to be working with. Next, let's select Stellaris in circuit debug interface in the connections. You can deselect Use Default Location and enter a project name. In this case, I'm going to be using Blink underscore TM4C underscore CCS. 
select the location for the workspace under CTI, TI RTOS, TM4C, Labs, Lab number two, and Project. Select Empty Project as we don't want anything built, and you can click Finish. Now that that's done, our next task is to add a source file to the project. Right click on the project and select Add Files. In this explorer, navigate to TI, TI RTOS, TM4C, Labs, Lab number two, and Files, and select main.c. Choose copy file rather than a link and hit OK. The main.c source file is now added to our project. At this point, try to build your project by clicking on the small hammer icon on the toolbar. When you do this, you should get some errors. This is normal. The compiler is looking for header files that have not been included yet, and it throws three errors to indicate this. To fix this, we are going to add a search path variable which allows the linker to find the correct libraries. Go to File, Open File, and browse to C, TI, TI RTOS, and select vars.ini and open. This file holds a number of variables, but only one of which we need to be concerned with. You can safely delete all other variables other than tbeware install. The path that is shown here is likely not where the tbeware software is installed. We need to update this with the correct value. An easy way to do this is by going to File Explorer, navigating to C, TI, tbeware, right clicking on the address bar and select Copy Address. Replace the address that's already in VARS with the new one. Make sure to save the vars.ini file and we will import it in the next step. To fix this, right click on your project and select import and import again. Expand Code Composer Studio and select build variables. Hit next. Under Build Variables, go to Browse, and select VARS. Hit Open, Apply to Workspace, and Overwrite Existing Values. You can now click Finish. Next, we need to link the driver libraries to the project. This will enable the program to interact with the hardware included on the Tiva board. Right-click on your project, and click Add Files. Go to C, TI, TivaWare, DriverLib, CCS, Debug, and DriverLib again. Hit Open. This time we're going to link to the file and not copy it. We need to select the path variable that we're going to link respective to. Select tvware install and hit OK. Finally, we need to include the search path of the libraries. Whenever you add a library, you need to ensure it can be found using the search path associated with the project. Right click on the project and select properties. Go to build, arm compiler, include options, and select the Add button on the top field. In this dialog box, we're going to type dollar sign, left curly bracket, tvaware underscore install, all in capitals, and a right curly bracket again. Hit OK. Apply and close the dialog window. And assuming you've done everything correctly, the project should now build without any errors. 
Check the hammer icon to confirm that everything is working as expected. There should be no errors in the error description box. You've now successfully created your first CCS project. You can use this project to complete the rest of the lab. The last thing I will talk about today is how to connect to the Tiva board and upload a program to it. To upload a program to the Tiva board, we need to make sure that the program builds successfully. You should see a build finished, which states that it was successful. Next, go to View, Target Configurations, and select the target configuration for this project. Right click and select Launch Configuration. Make sure that the Tiva board is properly connected to the computer. Select Run and connect to target. This connects the computer to the Tiva board. Next, go to Run, Load, and Load Program. Select Browse Project and pick the compiled code. Select OK and OK a second time. The program is now loaded to the Tiva board, but it will not run until you hit Resume. The program should now be running on the Tiva board. It's now your turn to use CCS. You should have all the information you need to successfully complete the lab procedure. If you've done everything successfully, the Tiva launchpad should blink a blue LED to indicate the program is working properly. It should look the same as mine here. To get credit for the lab, please make sure to fill out the lab handout and answer the questions there. Submit both your lab manual and your main.c to Canvas for marking. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it has given you the information you need to successfully install Code Composer Studio and create a CCS project. If you have any questions regarding the lab, please feel free to reach out to me by email before your lab submission deadline. Have a great week, and I'll see you in the next video.